Hi, I'm Phil Harbottle, and this is my sixth video discussing British science fiction paperbacks of the 1950s. Now, in the last video, I explained how Curtis Warren had competed against the Sky and Volgo Statons, and their initial offerings were pretty dreadful. But then there was a surprising development in autumn 1951. This was actually captured in a photograph that was published in the September 1952 issue, number 19, of the leading British science fiction magazine, New Worlds. Now, the important role that the science fiction magazines were to play in the development of the genre haven't been discussed yet, but that'll be dis the magazines will be covered in later videos. Now, after the war, all the leading and aspiring London science fiction authors and editors had been meeting in the White Horse Tavern every Thursday. In gratitude, the editor of New Worlds ran a couple of inside cover photographs but as adverts for the pub. Now in the photograph that was taken a year or so earlier, we see David Griffiths, the reader and main author at Curtis Warren, talking with E.C. Tubb. Tubb had been publishing short stories in New Worlds but had never written a novel. Griffiths persuaded Tubb that it would be a good idea if he wrote three novels for him. He told Tubb it would be necessary for him to submit them under his name, Griffiths, because that would ensure that the publisher would accept them from an employee without reading them. Griffiths would collect the payment and then pass the money to Tubb. The trusting Tyro author then passed his manuscript, as we see in the, in the photo, to Griffiths. There's three novels, Saturn Patrol, Planet Fall, and Argentis. They were written to the publisher's formula, 12 chapters of 3,000 words, each one ending on a high note. They were dynamic, exciting adventure novels, light years ahead of anything that Curtis had been publishing. They were entirely Tubbs' own work, not based on the covers, which Tubb would only see later when the books were published. Also in the photo, we see author William F. Temple, whom Griffiths persuaded to submit an unpublished novel by the late Morris G. Hughey. Hughey had died tragically young in 1947, and his friend Bill Temple was the literary executor for his estate. Hughie's novel, Out of the Silent Places, was published posthumously in April 1952. It too was a superior effort, a post-atomic war story, non-sensational and sensitively written with sound science. Tubb duly received payment for his first novel, Glenn never saw Griffiths again. He never received the money for Planetfall and Argentus, because Griffiths had just done a runner. Reportedly, he joined the Armory Catering Corps. Griffiths had also persuaded other patrons of the White Horse to submit to Curtis. A teenage John Brunner sold his very first novel as a schoolboy, which Curtis put out as Galactic Storm, a pre-prepared title. Another author, published author, George Hay, submitted a novel which Curtis put out as Terror. I had met George in London in 1970 when he admitted his authorship and signed his copy for me. As you can see here, to Phil George Hay. But this infusion of quality by actual genuine science fiction writers was not the last. Curtis would soon be up to the tricks of commissioning Western and hack writers, as we shall see in the next video. But there was also to be something of a surprise that would drag them out of the mire. Here's a teaser. Curtis had found a brand new superior cover artist, Gordon C. Davies. And he continued his cover artwork over onto the spine. Here are two, all the Curtis books, as you can see, it had white spines. 
but now they were switching over to coloured spines. And more particularly, they were adding the logo fantasy rather than science fiction. And the significance of this will be revealed in my next video.